said today, you gotta go Toyota Sienna. I think it was a 2013. Start with doing that spray out. We got a new bumper, new hood. Got a bunch of fenders on it. Now, with me spraying this color, even doing the bumper here, I already knew it didn't match. I used a goldish brown sealer there. So, you know, the cover will cover pretty easy, even though it's the wrong color. That color there is a little too light. It's close, but it's a little too light for what I'm doing. Now here I got a new hood and uh, like you know if you've watched my videos before, when I'm cutting in the hood I like to go ahead and spray sealer and one coat of base on the outside and the inside of underneath the hood. That way when I put it back on the car, I'll just run over it quick with 800 and it's ready to paint and blend and it probably only take me two coats to cover it. As you can see, that color don't match. It's not a great match. It's, uh, it's a little bit lighter now. I got this color from the camera. I used the camera to take a picture and you know get the color as close as possible. But as we all know in this paint world, that camera is not perfect. Sometimes it's gonna get it right. Sometimes it gets it really wrong. Gold is just a whole hard color, you know, to match anyway. That's why I prefer to blend. I don't even think they had me down to blend these fenders, but I'm like, oh, no, no, we got to blend these fenders to make the hood and the bumper match for sure. Now here, I'm just adding in a little base coat hardener. Uh, it's called underhood additive, but it's just a hardener for the base coat because under most hoods, not all of them, but most of them, that base coat don't have any clear on it. Now I've seen guys use like the matte clears or whatever to get that finish, but uh, I just put a little hardener in my base coat and spray it down wet and it usually leaves it with a little bit of a shine to it but not like it's been clear and you know that hardener is supposed to give it a little more protection. Now the color I mixed up the first time was good enough for underneath the hood and all that but I actually had to mix up another color to spray that bumper. Just different variant. I had to use a redder variant to spray that bumper because I definitely want the bumper to match the fenders. You know? So first, you know, I put down that base coat blender. It's just a clear blender, you know. I don't have to put it on the whole hood. I could just put it on the fenders, but I like to put it on the hood just to, you know, go ahead and fill in some of those scratches and, you know, make everything, give everything the same substrate so the base coat's landing nice and even. Using the DB1 1.3 tip on it, uh, of course it's gonna get everything nice and smooth. It's a great gun for base coat best gun I've ever used for base coat. Later on in the video, I broke out one of my older guns that I have and it actually gave me some problems, man. When I put the gun away, uh, it was working fine and now it gave me a little bit of a problem, but you know, we fixed it and everything came out all right. First coat of base, really, really I'm just aiming to get that hood, you know, get that first coat on the hood. And as you can see how much different this paint base coat I'm putting on is from the base coat I put on it when I uh, did my cut in there. Now the overspray from me spraying this hood is hitting the top of those fenders so it's already blending it out for me. Now the way I sprayed that first coat man seems to me after it flashed I can see it striping a little bit. I didn't necessarily spray it wrong but it ain't the uh, best way I could have sprayed it but I was just doing it hit I hit the bottom of those fenders just so to match the bumper make sure you know the color is the same I'm using the same base coat I didn't mix up any more from spraying the bumper so it should be all right uh, and you see now on this hood if you see I'm going the opposite way because I believe I could see a little bit of striping and I don't think it was the gun's fault I think it was the way I was spraying it but this should take care of that because I'm going the opposite way. Now I know some guys gonna see this video and say, oh man, you didn't even take out the antenna. And I didn't because it was so corroded, it would have broke if I had tried to take it off. No lie, it was that bad. Um, and I didn't know not the headlights, but I was able to pop, leave the hood popped up a little bit so I can get under there good. 
you know, and it has enough gap in between the fender and the headlight so I could tape it up right and get in there and scuff. Now here's my problem. Spraying with this gun, I already knew there was an issue with it. Like, I could tell it was an issue with it. This gun usually puts it on real wet, but I could tell something wasn't right with it. But I was like, man, maybe I'm just not used to it. You know, I, let me go a little bit more and then I'm like, nah, this definitely ain't right. What I really think is the last time I used it, I must have done clean it out good enough and or maybe a, like a little piece of something got stuck in one of those air holes or something because it was like heavy at the top and the bottom, real light in the middle. I mean, real light in the middle. It didn't look that bad when I held it up and sprayed it, but when you were spraying that panel, it just, it wasn't getting the panel wet. All in all, man, I actually just, uh, Went out there, I switched it to another air cap this gun came with. The, uh, I think it's called the high efficiency air cap. And uh, that's the one I prefer anyway over the HVLP air cap. I think the HVLP is like an HV30 and the other one is a T25 or something like that. But I switched to the high efficiency air cap anyhow. And uh, it, it was spraying just fine then. So I'm assuming it's the air cap, which I just left it in some thinners break up any clear that might have been left in there cleaned it real good and I haven't tried it since I cleaned it but uh, I think that probably would have fixed it now this Techno clear gun was my favorite gun before I started using the DV1 clear gun but man I'm gonna tell you the truth I don't know which one I like better because uh, this one actually puts it out much like the C2 air cap on the DV1 clear gun and that's the only reason I used it, because I, I changed the air cap on my DV-1 gun again. And then that reminded me that I even had this gun. So uh, I pulled it out and I was like, I'm gonna use it on this car because it's a little bit old of a car. I was like, if I get a little orange peel or something I don't really like, it'll be all right. But I didn't know this air cap was on the gun. And then when I used it, I didn't know this air cap wasn't gonna spray right. But we got that first coat down, man. I gave it about a good 10 minutes to tack off. Let that clear dry up real good, get nice and sticky. And then I'm gonna smash on that second coat. I, like I said, I changed the air cap. Second coat went on much nicer. Still left me with a lot of orange peel because the second coat is just following the orange peel that first coat left. And uh, it still had a pretty decent amount in that hood, you know. The, the fenders wasn't too bad. It was really the hood that I'm worried about. That's what everybody really looks at. And now this gun is just like the Pro Lights. Uh, it's just Techno. I think they make the Technos in, in North America and they, they develop as Pro Lights in the UK or somewhere. Um, but it's just like the Pro Lights. Same gun. I think the Pro Lights uh, just has like a air adjustment valve at the bottom, which this gun don't. Which I run a gauge on it anyway, so it don't really matter. I think I seen a video where it said the air caps for the Pro Lights and this are actually interchangeable. And as you can see, with me putting down this clear, you don't see no blend on those fenders or anything. It all came out pretty nice in my opinion. Now that first color I mixed up would have been a little too light. That was, that was a little more of a lighter gold. And that color might would have blended out just fine too. But, uh, I didn't want to risk it. I don't like doing jobs over. I don't, and I probably wouldn't have to do this one over because the blend didn't come out quite right. You know, it's an older van. Uh, yeah, most people don't really complain when it's an older van. This it had damage all over this car, but I guess somebody else hit them in the front end or something. It was somebody else's fault, so they got this fixed. But really, the lift gate on the van, the back bumper, all that was was really smashed. All right, last coat of clear. All right, here's a trick that uh, I learned watching Paint Society on YouTube. Uh, so I took the clear coat I had, I think I mixed up a little bit more, and I reduced it 10%. Now I just used regular base coat reducer, uh, the slow reducer, 10%, you know, mixed it up on the scale. Used my calculator to figure out what 10% of it was and uh, sprayed it. Now the reducer helps everything melt in makes it flow out a little bit nicer 
and I, I moved a little bit slower, put on a nice another heavy coat. Now, I usually never do three coats of clear, but I wanted this to come out nice because I didn't want to spend all day wet sanding and buffing it. So I was like, it's quicker for me to put on another coat of clear than it is for me to wet cut and buff this whole hood and fenders. And it came out with no problem. Uh, I gave it a good 15 minutes to flash before I went and smashed this third coat on. Now, and this third coat, you don't want to go too heavy. You definitely don't want to uh, pack it on there and lock down some of them solvents from the first two coats. So, yes, I went heavy, but not too heavy. It wasn't about to run or anything. I had a guy ask me about uh, the way I put clear coat on and the speed I put clear coat on, which I don't feel like I go that fast, but uh, he was saying it looks like I go fast in it, and I'm like, Really, it all depends on how far back you're holding your gun. Now, if you're a new painter, I suggest you hold the gun a little bit farther back so you can go slower, make sure, you know, it's going on right, you know, get more comfortable with it. I go a little bit fast because I trust myself. And if I do end up getting to run or something, I'm not scared to wet sand and buff it out, you know. I'm not really in the paint booth trying to impress everybody like I was when I first started. Now, you know, I'm kind of confident in my in my skills, in my craft. So, you know, I move a little bit faster. I'm still watching what how it goes on, but I'm not as nervous about it. And I do have that gun pretty close to the panel when I'm spraying. That's why I'm moving faster. If I held it back, I would move a little bit slower. And, you know, usually on the side of a car, on the uh, vertical panels, you have to move back a little bit. And uh, that's it for this one, man. That's what the car looks like outside. Just so everybody will know that the blends came out good. You can check it out in the sun. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, see you guys next time.